I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I'm going to give you a little warning today. Uh, it's not one of those, oh my god, the world's going to end. Just something you want to be aware of. About 20 years ago, I bought a set of oxyacetylene tanks from CEM Supply down in Coldwater, Michigan. Good company, love the guys, great group to work with. Uh, been doing business with them for 30 years. The tanks that I bought were state-of-the-art at the time, I'm told, but now I'm finding that there's a little problem with them. Do you remember me brazing up the number four uh, Stanley plane body? You know, silver solder and having to go in there and do all kinds of work on it, and a big pain in the butt. Well, still going on. When I set up the job in the garage to braze the crack that I put into the thing from handling it roughly, I went to use my oxyacetylene torch and pulled the hoses out, got it set up, got ready to light it, and I smelled acetylene. Now, usually that means that I bumped the torch head and knocked the valve open and the valve leaking a little bit. But it wasn't coming from the torch. It was coming from the tanks. No. So I walked over to the tanks and turned off the valve, went in the house, got a bottle of uh, soap and water, and came out and sprayed the valve and opened it again. And it was leaking and settling around the valve. Not a lot, not rushing, but it was leaking, definitely leaking, making bubbles at a rate of about one a second. Now that wasn't enough to cause it to go boom right then, but it, it, if I had not shut off the valve, if I if I had shut off the torches at the head with the small handles instead of going back to the tanks and turning off the tanks, or even if I had just backed the regulators out, that valve would have been still leaking. Acetylene is a really cool gas. It burns very hot in the presence of oxygen. And the world we live in has got 20% oxygen everywhere it goes, so acetylene really likes to burn. It also is heavier than air, so it settles in low spots. If I had left that tank leaking in my garage, and came out and started the car, it's a good chance it would have been boom. So what I'm going to tell you now is something that I learned yesterday when I went to exchange the tank. First off, you can't just take the tank to anywhere. You have to take it to a place that services that style tank. Well, I went to Purity in Battle Creek, another group of really nice guys, but they said, I'm sorry, uh, we don't sell that tank. That tank has a history of leaking around that valve. We stopped selling them years ago and scrapped them all out. And I said, oh, that's great. He said, well, what I can do is I can work it through the system and get it repaired for you, no charge, and do that. But I'm going to have to do some finagling with the paperwork. And I said, no, wait a minute. I'm not in the business of getting anybody in trouble. I'll just drive down to CEM Supply, which is an hour away from my house. and." exchange the tank. Tell them that the tank valve is leaking, let them know what's going on, and get a new tank. So that's what I did. I put it back in the truck and drove down there and exchanged the tank. Problem is, I still have an old tank with a bad valve design that is no longer being serviced. When CEM Supply stops selling these, then I'm going to be out. I'm going to not have a tank to use. And that's a problem for me, but not a big one, because I don't use that much acetylene anymore. If I go through a set of tanks in two or three years, that's a lot of use for me now. But what might happen is somebody might get this tank, not realize that there's a problem with it, and have a boom. Don't want to have that happen. So I'm going to show you what I found. This is the style of tank right here. It's called a flat top. The thing I don't like about this kind of tank is this fitting points up. So all the junk in the world falls into that hole. And when you put the regulator on, you're supposed to crack the valve and blow the dust and dirt out of the hole, but why design something that way that dust and dirt gets into the hole? And before you say it, no, you can't set this on its side. Acetylene tanks have acetone in them. Acetone is used to dissolve the acetylene into it because if you pressurize a tank above 15 psi, a tank of acetylene becomes a bomb. So you'd never want to 
pressurize either a line, a hose, a tank, a valve, or anything else with any more pressure than 15 PSI with a torch. With the acetone in the tank, the acetone dissolves the acetylene into it, and then it, as it's being used, it boils off out of the acetone. It's like uh, something that they used to call a kapok. I don't know if it's still kapok in there or if it's some kind of ceramic fiber or some other space age material, although this, this tank has been around since a long, long time. I remember seeing these when I was a kid. So it could very well be that these still have kapok in them. So it's a, an absorbent material with acetone in it that dissolves the acetylene. Now why is that a big issue? Well, if you lay this tank on its side and draw off acetylene out of the valve, the acetone will spit out of the valve. You'll notice it flashing in the torch. <laughs> Little pops of flame coming out of the torch. And it, it may cause the torch to uh, go out, it may cause other problems, but you never want to pull acetylene off a tank that's laying on its side unless it's designed to do that. So, why didn't I just tighten up the packing? Well, what happens if I'm tightening on that packing and I crank a little too hard and I break something? Okay, I've snapped the packing nut and now I can't tighten it. No, really, what might happen is I might break the valve out of it. Now I have a tank that is essentially open to the atmosphere. It will vent at whatever pressure. It can boil the acetone and get the acetylene out of it. Once again, we're back to being a bomb. So if you have one of these kind of tanks, be aware that it's not safe. Be aware that you might have a valve leak. Be aware that when you go to exchange it, they're really not going to want to give you a different style tank. Now why is that? Well this tank has a value. And the value of the tanks are part of the inventory of the company that you got it from. Because it's an exchange, it's kind of like a lease. I'm buying the tank, I can carry it anywhere in the world that I want. Some companies will honor the lease and fill it, some won't. Some will say, not part of my inventory, I'm not dealing with it. The only way to get rid of these tanks for a company that wants to change over and go to a different style is to do what Purity did. Call all the tanks back, exchange them for different tanks, and scrap these tanks out. Now you can imagine with the EPA that this is not a uh, simple process to scrap out a tank full of acetone. First off, acetone is considered a hazardous material. It's flammable, it's a solvent, it causes explosions, uh, big pain in the butt. Then there's the tank. It's iron, which iron is recyclable, no problem, but it's got kapok in it, and you can't just cut it open because it's got a little trace element of acetylene in it all the time. So I don't know exactly how you do recycle these things. I'm sure there's some scrap supplier somewhere that's rubbing his hands saying, boy, I hope that thing gets scrapped out soon because I make a ton of money for it. So that's the story of old Sneelock and the acetylene tank. Word of warning, if you have one of these tanks, go out and check it. Thanks for watching, guys. Be safe out there.